I have made a plethora of prepping for baby videos, but a few of you mentioned a void on my channel, and that is the final preparation for baby, what you should pack in your hospital delivery bag. While I am not pregnant at the moment, I have had three children, and I wanted to share with you guys what you need and don't need in your delivery bag. I didn't know most of these as a first time mom, so hopefully I can help you avoid my misses. But before we get into it, I have to shamelessly plug my channel. Please like and subscribe if you have not already. And if you are a current subscriber, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you guys. Everything I recommend and or use, I'll be popping in images throughout the video and all of those will be linked below as well. First recommendation here is a comfy robe and a backup robe. Robes are great for recovery because they're super comfy, easy to go to the bathroom, easy access for baby and breastfeeding. And if you end up with a C-section for whatever reason, Reason, you don't have an annoying pant band pushing on your incision. A robe ties up higher than that. And I learned the hard way my first time around that I should have had a backup robe as well. Ending up with a C-section, you're in the hospital for four days, a lot of stuff can happen between your incision bleeding onto your robe, your boobs leaking onto your robe, spit up, just random spills if you're a klutz like me, you're gonna want a backup robe so you are not without a robe at any time. Next is non-skid socks and slippers. Your hospital should give you at least one pair of non-skid socks, but if you wanna change your socks at any point, be sure to bring an extra pair or two. And if you wanna wear slippers, make sure that those are non-skid as well. The last thing any new mom who just delivered a baby needs is to slip on the slick hospital floors. So any footwear you bring, make sure they are non-skid. Something you don't need to bring to the hospital is a postpartum recovery belt. If you ask, your hospital should provide you one and I really liked the recovery belt that my hospital provided. After you deliver, your belly isn't all of a sudden tiny again. You still look literally full-term pregnant. It takes a while for your uterus to shrink down. And so while your uterus is still big and huge, there's no baby in there anymore. So it's kind of just this big hollow pocket sticking out. And I really liked my postpartum recovery belt to just help my belly feel more supported. Once you get home and your belly shrinks down even more, you can buy postpartum belts that are smaller. But for the purpose of this video, what you need to bring to the hospital for delivery, you do not need to bring a postpartum recovery belt. Then moving to an optional item, we have a postpartum squirt bottle. After you deliver your baby, your body will continue to clear itself out as if you have the heaviest period of your life for weeks after. Things are kind of crazy down there and you're bleeding. Anytime you go to the bathroom, you're going to be squirting yourself off with a spray bottle to just clean everything down there. The hospital provides you a Gatorade-like squirt bottle to clean yourself off, but if you want, you can buy a more ergonomic squirt bottle. There's one sold by Free to Baby that you can buy, but it is optional because the hospital will give you something. Next thing I learned to put in my delivery bag the hard way was a toiletries bag that can hang. At least for me, my hospital, and I know some other hospitals out there, don't give you a lot of counter space in the bathroom. It's not like you'll have a lot of toiletries anyways, but it is nice to have the toiletries that you do bring available for you in the bathroom when you need them. Some of the items to put in your toiletry bag is obviously a toothbrush and toothpaste, but don't forget your mouthwash because again, if you end up with a C-section for whatever reason, you're not able to get up for a while after delivery, and you're gonna want that mouthwash just to help yourself feel a little bit cleaner since you can't get up to brush your teeth. You'll also want to bring chapstick and lotion. You may get quite dehydrated after delivery, plus hospitals are just very dry, sterile environments, and my lips got super dry and chapped, my skin got like icky flaky, so it was nice to bring lotion and chapstick to just help keep the moisture in. You'll also want makeup wipes, just if you're feeling a little lazy and you don't wanna get up to wash your face, a nice makeup wipe will just help you stay fresh. And if you're like me and you enjoy makeup, it doesn't hurt to bring a little bit of makeup along too. Let's be honest, you're probably gonna post some photos on Instagram and it doesn't hurt to just have a little swoop of eyeliner. I, I know things aren't about you, it's about the baby, but sometimes when you're feeling like you look like a gremlin, <laughs> 
Just that little bit of eyeliner can make you feel on point. Next items you'll wanna bring are some nursing bras and breastfeeding friendly clothing. I'll have some of my favorite options linked below. Staying in the boob department, bring some of these breastfeeding items that I'm about to mention with you to the hospital so that you don't get gouged by the hospital convenience store that practically robbed me for not being prepared with these items. We'll start with lanolin cream. Right now, your nipples are nice and soft, but baby doesn't care about that. Baby is going to be sucking the living daylights out of your nipples for any ounce of milk that could be behind those walls. And that can mean chapped, bruised, blistered, bloody nipples in my case. I mean, note, I did start off with twins, so I had double the sucking going on and my nipples suffered for it but lanolin cream is just this cream that you put on your nipples after feeds and it helps prevent chapping and just overall discomfort when you're first breastfeeding. You may want to also bring nipple ice packs to help ease the pain and then also bring nursing pads so that once you're breasts are producing milk, they don't soak your bras. Next thing you wanna bring is your breastfeeding pillow to help prop your baby for feeds. If you don't have a breastfeeding pillow, you can always request that the hospital bring some extra regular pillows that you can stack and prop your baby for a feed. Then an optional item is a breast pump. It may be easier to just bring it so you have it just in case. However, if you don't bring it, if you don't have enough room for it, you can leave it at home because if it comes to the point where you need to pump, the hospital has breast pumps that they can provide. We're done with your boobs now. The next thing you wanna bring are prenatal or postnatal vitamins. Just because you had your baby now doesn't mean you don't have to take your vitamins anymore. Especially if you're breastfeeding, you really wanna take your prenatal or postnatal vitamins so that those nutrients can pass through your milk to baby. Then an optional item is a milk maker's tea or any supplements to boost milk supply. I went into delivery day knowing that I was having a planned C-section for my twins and I was worried that I would have issues with milk supply as a result, so I brought in these types of items to help get my body going in producing milk. Another one for my C-section mamas is a stool softener. Talk to your doctor about this one. If you end up with a C-section, the painkillers that they give you cause constipation, plus the fact that they are cutting through your abdominals you don't have much to push with when it comes to your first poop, and that first poop can be quite painful. So a stool softener, if approved by your doctor, can just help make things less painful when it gets to that point. Kind of staying in this nether region category, let's talk about adult diapers. These are optional to bring to the hospital because the hospital will provide you with these disposable granny panties that are really nice, and they give you these huge, pad liners for them that are really easy to switch out. I really liked using just what the hospital provided, but once I got home, I will say I ended up using adult diapers, but when you're at the hospital, which is the purpose of this video, the hospital provides you with unlimited disposable granny panties and liners, so you do not need to bring anything of your own. Those were all the care and clothing needs. Now let's move to the entertainment category. You're going to want an extra long cell phone charging cord. The little one that Apple gave me with my iPhone didn't reach the wall when I had my phone in bed. So you want the extra long charging cord so that you can use your phone and have it plugged in at the same time. Next, you'll wanna bring all the snacks. Hospitals are not known for having really good food. I mean, it's edible, so this is definitely an optional category, but if you want anything good, you're gonna need to bring it in from the outside. Oh, and one more for the clothing category. You are going to want a comfy outfit to wear as you leave the hospital. It's probably going to need to be in your second trimester size. Cause again, when you leave the hospital, it's only been a few days. You're not gonna be back at your pre-pregnancy body. Your uterus is still gonna have a ways to go. So bring clothes in second trimester pregnancy sizes to wear as you leave the hospital. I mean, unless you wore really baggy clothes before you were pregnant, you're just probably not going to fit into your pre-pregnancy clothing. Now to the fun part. Up until this point in the video, we've only talked about what you need to pack for yourself, but you get to leave the hospital with your little human in tow. So let's talk about what you need to pack for them. 
First, you will need an infant car seat and the car seat base properly installed in your car. Then you're going to want a cute going home outfit for your baby. I missed the ball on this my first time as a mom. So don't miss this super adorable photo opportunity. Then you're gonna want your pediatrician's info. After you deliver a baby, your pediatrician should come to the hospital to check up on baby. So make sure you communicate with your pediatrician and the hospital to ensure everyone's on the same page. Something you don't need to bring to the hospital is diapers and wipes. Your hospital should provide newborn diapers and wipes for your baby and pro tip, before you leave the hospital, if you're good with your nurses, which my nurses were super cool, they hooked me up with a ton of diapers and wipes before I left the hospital. The hospital gets a whole bunch of free diapers and wipes from Huggies and Pampers and other brands because those brands want parents to fall in love with their products at the hospital. So the hospitals just have tons of extras and my nurses were really awesome about giving me some of those extras. Oh, and I forgot a really important thing in the beginning also. Bring your photo ID, insurance info, and your birth plan. And the next thing I bring up might cause some eyes to roll. I get it, it's gonna be a total first world problem, but part of your birth plan and delivery plan, you might want to add in a social media plan. Now hear me out. Again, I know this sounds like a first world problem, but let me tell you a little story. When I delivered my babies for the first time, Obviously, the most important thing is the babies were healthy and I was healthy. However, you're going to be moody and emotional, potentially after you deliver, and my husband texted some photos and information to some of his family members, which I was fine with, and the next day when I wanted to post the birth announcement on my socials, one of his family members had already <laughs> taken it upon themselves to post many of the photos that I wanted to share. My kids' names, their birth weights, all of the announcement info they had already posted on their socials to all of, you know, my same friends and family. Hormonal me who just delivered babies and may not have been in the right headspace got really upset when this happened. I felt like my moment was stolen. Obviously, I was still elated and happy with the babies. I'm just trying to save y'all some potential hormones if someone were to do this to you, if you, if you want to be the one to announce on socials. Maybe you don't care. Maybe you want other people. You're not even going to do an announcement. But for me, in my head, I wanted to be the one to announce my babies on socials, announce their names, share the photos, and someone else did all of that for me the day before I even got on social. So 